Maybe they have here is the HG Base T matrix switch, the 4x2. It's a 4 input to output matrix switch. The part number for this is the R014-NTX-VAR-402. So, right here you can see is the front port. The front side you have the input LED, the LEDs for the input and outputs, as well as the manual switch buttons. And then you also have a power LED and reset button. And also here you see ports for the IR. This I'll be going into later on. And lastly, you also see an IR sensor for the remote control that comes for this remote control that comes with the unit. Okay. So on the back side, you'll see the four HDMI inputs as well as the RS and IR. The this these two are for this this specifically for the matrix itself for the switching matrix itself. Also, you'll see is four RS two 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 ports. These are to be connected to the players, and I'll be going through this later on also. And then you'll see the outputs. Now, for this unit, it supports both 4K and 1080p, depending on what receiver you use. So at my test, I'll be using two different receivers. One receiver is a 100 meter version, which supports 4K. The second receiver is the 150 meter version, which only supports up to 1080p. And Likewise, for these, I have the two cables, 100 meter cable CAT6A, 150 meter cable CAT6A for each effective for each receiver. And this one, this compute, this monitor is for the 4K, and I'll be using this monitor as a 1080p. And now I'm going to start doing the connection for you. So here, you see, I'm going to connect the first. I'm going to connect the four U, the four HDMI ports here. So since I have four, since I have I'm going to be demoing 1080, 1080 and 4K. I'll be using four sources and two sources will be 4K, two sources will be 1080. So, you zoom out here. You'll see I have on my right side, on the right side, it's all 1080. Two players will be playing 1080 version, one's 1080p, one's 1080i. The one's a regular DVD player. And then on, my, on the left side, you'll see the two 4K players. That's how I've been connecting them. So let me just do quickly, real quick. Now, before I connect, now I'm, I'm going to connect this the, the actual receivers now. Even though this unit has 4K and 2K, 4, could do 4K and 1080p. It is recommended that if you are going to use like different resolution monitors, you connect the 4K monitor to output one. So basically, for output one, you connect the highest resolution you will be using. So in my case, I'll be using the highest resolution I'm using 4K, so I'm connecting that to output one. And the 1080p to output two. Additionally, I'll be also be showing you the R the R232 control. For switching, this is the same as we use for all our other matrix products. So I'll just connect the cable that I have connected to that's connected to the computer. Plug it in. Now on the computer, I already have a program running for TerraTerm. You can see over here. We we'll go over here. This is the computer screen. I have TerraTerm running. It's my R two 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 control software. Set up correctly. With the serial fork set up correctly, and that's all ready right now. So, you zoom back here to the unit. So, the last thing I do is plug in the power. So, here, power is on. You see the LEDs come up. Now, on the receivers, you should see the orange LEDs come up also. So, then you start by turning all the players on now, players and TVs on. Okay. Now, remember I I said it was important 
to do the 4K on one side, on the input side. That's because when I do when you do the switching, it will depend the resolution. That's if you have a 4K that's selected right now, it's auto, that's upscaled. It will depend on your receiver. It will be depending on output one to see what's which is first, basically max first. So you, if you want to avoid any problems, that's, just, that's why I said it's the best to put your highest resolution monitor on connection onto the output one. Okay, so here you see is the screen, the main screen. Here's you see it's both of them. So right here I have it uh, up. So output A and B I have 1080, C and D is 4K. So let me start switching around. You see it working? Actually, you need to start playing these files. I want to hit play of all these players. Just to make sure. Okay, just hitting play on all these players just to make sure you'll see it correctly. So let me first go through the resolution here. So here you see on both TVs, I have 1080p. Okay. Now let me switch different source. I want to switch only output one right now first. Output one. I want to switch to B. So here you see, one TV, same thing. Another TV, different thing. 1080p. Yeah, different resolutions, no problem. Now, now let me change it again. Now, since I'm C, D is going 4K, so if I hit C, I'll put 1 to C. You see here it comes up, 4K. Now 4K, and the other one is 1080. Okay, lastly, D. Also a 4K player. Also 4K. Now, now we know that these work. Okay. So here, now I'm gonna show you when I do. Now, if you're now when you go in, now there's a thing about um, when you want to do 4K on one TV, and then you think you okay. I'm watching 4K on this TV, but this TV I want to switch it, switch the source, sort to also the this TV. But since this receiver does not support 4K, if you put it to the same source. You will say, you will see the 4K comes out as 4K. However, the 1080p TV, the receiver, does not come out at all because it can't support 4K, and this unit will not like, downgrade one source, one output to down, so it'll show nothing. Similar, same thing. I have D and D, same thing. Four K, nothing. If you are on, on the same on the same input, but your output one has 4K, the other one would not would not be automatically downgraded. It'll stick to 4K, and if the receiver does not support 4K, it'll play nothing. Okay, so here's that. Now I mentioned the R232. So if you look over here, when we did the first. When I first plug it in, you will notice this thing right here. You'll see HDMI matrix, the firmware, title, stuff like that. This occasionally sometimes that happens. Does that disregard it? You can disregard that. So you hit STE real quick. Now, one thing to be aware. I need to this real quick. Um, I have to say one thing right now. Right here, this firmware is still in the like the rewriting phase, so they haven't fully down yet. So the output one and two are swapped. So basically, if you said output one here, it means output two on that on the unit. That's the thing they will fix. They'll be writing that again. So that's still being updated right now. But 
overall wise, working condition wise, it still it does work. So here I show you right here. So the, the commands we have is the three commands: status, power down, and switch. So you first do a power down. Power down. You see a power down here. You see the LED lights are here. Gone. Power down. Hit the command again. It says power on, and it comes back to whatever original setting it was. So let me change the setting right now to go back to this. So okay, I stick with right now 4K to 4K, 1080 to 1080. So can you see both videos come up? Now you look over here. We have the status command. So like I said earlier, I'll put one B, I'll put two D. But because this unit, this right now, the firmware has it swapped around, it should, on the unit, it'll say, unit will show, on the unit right here, it'll show output 2, B, output 1, D. Because the firmware right now has it swapped. That's fine. So here you see you're here. Now, so, if I want to use like a switching command, I go SW, all lowercase, the number, the output number, you need to switch output number two. So that'll be one here. Then space. Then the, the, in, the input. A. So here, when I did that, you notice the screen changed. Over here, output two changed from B to A. And the monitor comes up. Similarly, I do it again. SW two C, meaning output one, change. D to C, and that's it for that one. So that's all the three commands you have. And now with this unit done, additionally it has the IR port. I didn't demo that because that's just an extension cable in case you need it. We don't offer, we don't include that. So, but if you have like an IR cable, you can plug it in and use this remote. Oh, I didn't actually demo this remote right now. This remote. What this remote does is also the same thing as their R232 functionality. So basically, I have output 1 right now. I hit button 1. Cycles cycles through the, out, the inputs of output 1. Number 2, button 2, cycles through input 2. Now this is dependent. This is this IR sensor right here. For this remote. Now, like I said, the IR, our IR jack in the back, you can basically use it like a IR cable that's included with our receivers. Let me find one. Here you go. Like this thing. Something like this. That's came with that it comes with. You just plug it in. So you can put this somewhere else. This IR sensor somewhere else. And it'll still detect. It'll still read it, basically. Okay. Now that's that for that. So, with this that done, now I'm going to demo you demo the IR commands here for these. And for this, I'm just going to do one source because this is going to be the same group for everything. I'm just going to do one source for you. Okay, so here I'm going to demo the IR, the spawn port, the spawn ports right here. So how this is basically used is you see it labeled A, IRA, IRB, IRC, IRD. These are linked to the inputs. So whatever source is connected to the A, B, C, and D is what the IR should be for. So for me, to make it easier to show you, I'm going to be using basically IRD because my I know where the, for the IRD, the player that's connected to IR to D, I know where the IR port is on the players, so it's easier to show. So first thing first, I have this unit here, this cable here. So this is the output ca output cable. So I put this to the out. And on my player side, I'm gonna put the IR sensor near the for the IR here within the line of sight to that, so it's easier. Now, there now we have this cable here. This is the input cable. For the input cable, I'm gonna put it onto my R my receiver input IR in. So here you go. Okay. Now, these are one way. These go only one way. So from in to out. Or from in to out. You cannot put in and out. Easy. And try to control it. That does not work. Okay? That's just a quick tip. Okay, so here's what it does. This would be like the IR for everything else that we all are other base, HD base C stuff. 
But see, like you said right here, you see remote control here? I'm gonna hit, you see it moving the settings, the scenes, stuff like that. I'm gonna hit, actually, I wanna do something easier. Like, pause, play. So right here, I'm gonna light a sight. Now, let's say I'm out of here, somewhere away from the TV. Like, if, if my receiver is right here. If I hit pause and play here, I hit pause and play. I hit play. That's why I hit. I'm playing the play button here. You see it now. Doesn't the player does not recognize it because it cannot see it, right? So you need to move the like the IR sensor in. This IR sensor in. Put it here. Now you see it play and pauses. So basically, it's transferring. It's seeing the remote control control here signal here. It's going through to the receiver. From the receiver, it's going through a Cat5 cable, Cat6A cable, and from 6A, it's going to the IR out to this player because I had right now I'm using I'm selecting it as a source, so you see it working. That's what the IR does. Now, additionally, if you want, it's not this is how most people will be using it like this way. Now, you can swap it around, saying say I want to go the other way. I'm not sure. You want to go the other way. It's like you're at the player side, but you want to control the TV side. Do the same thing. All you do is switch the this cable, this IR out cable, this IR output cable to the receiver, and the receiver input IR input cable to the IR in on this side. And that'll work. But I won't demo that because that's not really useful. And that's for the IR. So now I'm going to be demoing the RS-232. And what we're looking at, the ports we're looking at is the top four right here. The RC2 ports are here. And these are what's supposed to be linked to the player, to your source devices. But since we don't have a, our devices that not accept RC2, I'm going to show you off differently using a computer and a scanner, barcode scanner. So, I'm going to be, any of these ports work. It depends on what source is being currently being selected. So, I'm going to be using output 4. Because this, this is output 4 right now. This is the source that's playing output 4. So, that's what I'm going to be showing you. So. I'm going to connect one of the R32 cables to the upper four, to basically the D port. Now, this supposedly is connected to the player, but our player doesn't support it, so I'm going to be connected to a computer instead using an R32 scanner, which is simpler. And then on the receiver side, it also has an R32, which I'm going to plug in. Cable 2, and this cable I'm going to connect is to the, the barcode scanner. Now, on the barcode scan, on the computer side, I already have a program set up. I have Terraturn product, basic barcode scanner program, anything will work. So, here you see, I already have a scanner. I'm going to do the, I'm going to scan something on the floor right here. Scan the barcode. And you see, whatever barcode I scan, it does come up, it is scanned. So basically, this barcode scanner is reading this barcode, transferring the information to the receiver. The receiver is transferring it over the 100 meter CAT6A cable to the switch, the matrix switch. And the matrix is transferring it from that output, that whatever source output it is, to, to the computer. And let's just shows up. Because this monitor is going to directly to the computer right now. So again, Anything works, the scan. So that basically means the RFC22 functionality is working. And that's it for this. Now, if you want to put a different input, that's fine. As long as the same source is selected, you're okay.